What is happening everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. Today it's all about the Buck 110. Really, it's been about the Buck 110 for about 60 years. Today we're going to be telling the history of the incredible Buck 110. Let's light it up. Buck was actually founded in 1902 by Hoyt H. Buck. They weren't actually incorporated until 1961. And two years after they incorporated, in 1963, the board met because they wanted to design a knife. Now, there had been a knife called the Folding Hunter that many companies made. You're probably familiar with it. It's a slip joint knife. But Buck wanted to take it one step further. They wanted a Folding Hunter, but they wanted to make it a single blade and they wanted to make it something that could do the work of a fixed blade. And so they developed one of the first lockback folding knives. They developed the Buck 110. Now, this knife went into production in 1964. That's when it was introduced. It's a three and a quarter inch blade, and you know it, you love it. Everybody's seen it before. This is what we know and recognize today as the Buck 110. Now, this one's slightly different than the one that was originally created. Originally, it didn't have quite the exaggerated clip point blade that it does now, and originally it did not have a hollow grind. No, those came about a little bit later. In 1981, they featured the hollow grind, which meant that you could get it a little bit sharper, had a little bit finer edge on it, um, worked a little bit better for skinning. And then uh, in 1986, I believe it was, the handle was updated to actually feature finger grooves like this Buck 112 right here. Now this Buck 112 is actually an offshoot of the Buck 110. They wanted to make a more carryable version, so they made the Buck 112. Now this is the finger groove version right there that I was talking about. They made that in the Buck 110 around 1986. Now originally, um, they were using, uh, I believe it was 420 high carbon steel. Um, and originally, actually, no, excuse me, originally, they were using 440C blade steel, and then from 1981 to 1992, they used 425M, and then they moved on to 420HC, which is, uh, if you don't know much about it, is one of the most corrosion-resistant seals, making it phenomenal as a blade steel for this type of knife, one for cleaning game. And like I said, this is what we know as the Buck 110 right here. We're talking wood handles, brass bolsters, lock back, super strong, super sturdy, and obviously comes with the sheath. Now that's what we all know and love, and that has been one of the most iconic knives. We've seen them in movies. We've heard them in songs by Leonard Skinner, Hank Williams Jr. Songs have been made with this knife in them. This has been one of the most famous and one of the most copied knives of all time right there. That's gonna be the most popular version. Now, over the years, they have developed many, many different versions of this. In 2017, they introduced the automatic version, like this one right here. Now, this is the 112 Auto, and this one's coming in with S30V on the blade steel with the Boss Heat Treat, and of course, got the G10 handles right there. Um, upgraded all around. Now, still, what's interesting about this is this is an out the side automatic but the button doesn't act as a lock itself. Still acts as a lock back, so still retains um, that super, super strong construction, but out the side automatic and flies right out there. This is an absolute icon. Now, like I said before, we've got the 112, which was also an offshoot, something that was a little more carryable and a little more comfortable to carry right there. Then, we're talking in about 2018, um, a couple of lightweight additions were made, including the thick version with FRN handles, and these are going to be a, a lot more budget-minded right there, as well as the Buck 110 Slim. And this one's going to have the uh, older traditional style drop point blade right there, obviously coming in with the thumb studs making this a little bit more of a modern carry. It's got the deep carry pocket clip right there and coming in at a lot lower price point. Then, a 
of course you want people you've got a lot of people that want you know the higher end blade steels so you end up with this one right here thumb studs g10 handles lock back and that one's with the boss heat treat s30v on the blade steel that's going to be a great everyday carry deep carry pocket clip that is reversible right there and still got that heavy duty lock back action um, and that's really what they set out to create uh, was a platform that could be and would be an icon uh, for years and years to come. Now, the Buck 110 continues to be just as popular as it ever has been, um, obviously because we don't have all the versions right here. The reason why we don't have all the versions right here, we stay sold out of them. They're just that popular, folks. So that is the history of the 110 and then, of course, a little bit of the 112 Ranger. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little insight into the Buck 110, how it was developed, how it came about. And uh, I, I got to tell you, it makes me feel a little old that now uh, the Buck 110 has been an icon for right at 60 years, almost 60 years next year. So, uh, folks, let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you want to hear a history of how a specific knife model was developed, let us know in the comments down below. We're going to keep this history series going. As always, it's been me, TC, here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. And remember, if it cuts like that classic Buck 110, then we carry it.